हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे इज थर्टीन ऑफ अक्टूबर एंड वेलकम टू द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस डिस्कशन सो गाइज लेट स्टार्ट विद द वीडियो इन द वीडियो विल डिस्कस द एंटायर एनालिसिस ऑफ द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर अलोंग विद द बैकग्राउंड एज वेल एज द वे फॉरवर्ड इन द आर्टिकल्स नाउ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग आई वुड लाइक टू रिमाइंड यू इफ यू आर न्यू दैट यू कैन डाउनलोड दिस एक्सप्लेनर पी फ्रॉम द टेलीग्राम चैनल इन दिस एक्सप्लेनर पी आई हैव गिवन द नोट्स ऑफ ऑल द आर्टिकल्स यू कैन फॉलो दिस पर्टिकुलर पी डी एफ अलॉन्ग विद द वीडियो इन ऑर्डर टू गेट अ बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग fine uh, in the last you will also get a mains practice question now guys let's start with the discussion but before that first of all let's take the overview of the entire newspaper so that we can understand that which articles are important in the today's newspaper so the first article talks about inflation inflation accelerates to 7.41% now you don't need to track the month by month inflation but we'll see that what are repercussions on indian economy then home minister to launch hindi version of first year mbbs book now see uh, the book is being launched which publisher is launching and all that thing is not important but one thing i want to tell you that actually when we talk about new education policy 2020 that was announced 2 years back in the new education policy there was the promotion of education in the regional languages in mother tongue as well as the promotion of education in the hindi language and in the past couple of months repeatedly the minister of home affairs have provided that in pursuance of the new education policy 2020 the courses in engineering courses in law as well as the courses in medicine should be provided in hindi language so in that particular direction this particular thing has been there then moving on after that uh, after that uh, 22 uh, 22000 crore rupees oil psu losses fine then advertisements etc has been give, given in the regional section guys the political issues and the regional issues are not that much important fine only the policy related matters will be important and therefore here we have this particular article where the tamil nadu had notified the the india's slender loris sanctuary this is the first slender loris sanctuary we'll see this particular article in detail then SIT formed in Kerala for scientific probe in human sacrifice case so recently there was one incident happened when there when uh, was happened when a person was uh, basically a person was sacrificed in and in that thumbs arrest have been made so a special uh, basically uh, here a special investigation team has been formed however a policy matter point is not there in this article so if the academic and policy matter is not there it just become a kind of kind of a crime related kind of a news so for that dimension you don't need to go there then the top court to deliver the verdict in hijab case today so guys in the past multiple times we have discussed this particular issue where i have told you that basically we have seen that karnataka high court in the past have given a judgment where it said that wearing of hijab wearing of hijab is not an essential religious practice and therefore it can be uh, it can be regulated by the educational institutions and therefore kerala high court provided that if an educational institution school does not wants to allow the women to wear hijab they can do that thing then this matter reached to supreme court and in supreme court now the matter has been debated whether women can be uh, ca ca can be banned from wearing hijab and all such kind of a things so that decision will be given today so as it will happen in tomorrow's newspaper analysis we'll discuss that what verdict was gi is given by supreme court so right now you don't need to go in this article then moving on this tenders etc not important and now we'll come to editorial page the court and the problem with its collegium we'll see this article the article is talking about that why there is a need to reform the collegium system of india the war against illegal goods as india's fight good article with respect to indian economy we'll see this article then winter is coming so recent yesterday we have seen that the imf imf in the growth forecast has provided that that in basically the india's growth projections were given okay so it has retained that the global growth will be at 3.2% next year's projection is around 2.7% so earlier the next year's growth projection was 2.9% it has reduced to 2.7% why this reduction because of global inflation because russia ukraine war global inflation rising crude oil prices uncertainties and all those things fine then it has also provide it, it has also talked about okay it has also talked about the growth forecast for india okay so growth estimate for india fine uh just a minute fine after that 
it retained india's 2023 growth estimated 6.1% okay now one thing is that uh, as these forecast is being given this is the imf forecast before that world bank forecast came okay and before that there were some of the credit rating agencies also that also gave the forecast now you don't need to remember the forecast given by every organization because that is very volatile it depends on the economic condition in present times however as the times will change these forecast will change so coming every month or few months these forecast change so you don't need to mug up that then moving on the dangerous spiral so this article talks about the russia ukraine war and says that only compromise can work out we need to uh, we need a forest led cop27 so good article will see that fine the bjp's stock response to congress charge and all that thing political inclined article not important for exam unfilled vacancies stagnant workforce delay rti replies so in the uh, basically if you remember yesterday i have discussed a very very detailed article on the rtis we've discussed that there is pending backlog of cases okay basically the rti petitions that are going to information commissions they are not being disposed and because of that there is huge pendency in rti cases 3.14 lakh cases are there presently and it has been consistently increasing in past 3 years fine so that is something provided now in this particular article charts have been given for example how many cases are in maharashtra up different different states okay all that particular kind of a thing i'll insist you that please go and watch just yesterday's rti article very excellently we have discussed this entire issue then text and context china's wolf warrior era so china's evolution of foreign policy will discuss briefly in this article we'll take it then the grandeur of the chola empire one of the longest ruling dynasties in south india okay now uh, guys this is actually a uh, this particular article is actually a bibliography article okay just a minute so this particular article is a bibliography article now bibliography article it means that this article will talk about certain of the book references etc now what has happened what has happened recently we see that mani ratnam's movie is being released which is based on uh, okay uh, pony and selvan the movie is based on the grandeur of the chola empire okay so this particular article has given the references of the many of the historic uh, many of the books okay for example the the spelt of the cholas by professor k a nikanta okay and in this particular direction many of such kind of a book names okay have been mentioned for upsc examination for our upsc general studies examination the article is not containing much of a substance okay i'll not suggest you to read this particular article rather if you want you can revise the chola chola his chola empire's lesson in the uh, ancient history okay then moving on India China hold consultations in Beijing ahead of the Communist Party Congress so we see this thing that on 16th of October National Congress of CPC is going to be held okay uh, in this particular direction in this particular direction uh, the bilateral talks regional issues have been discussed fine uh, then were objectives of demonetization achieved so a question has been raised with respect to the logic and rationale of 2016 demonetization briefly we'll see this article no more indictment under section 66a so what section 66a is and what supreme court issue has come we'll see this thing okay then okay there's one question sir chola empire can come in prelims uh, see dear chola empire is anyhow a very important lesson in the ancient history so you need to prepare it anyhow fine just a movie is being released so it's not the case that now only it will become important anyhow the chola empire is important so read it from there this article on the chola empire is not actually on the chola empire it is giving okay a, a book is written not, now these are not the historical books these are the contemporary books that are there so okay so that is a literary article for upsc not important okay then moving on despite setback india uk officials to hope conclude tricks on the trade pact uh, so we find this thing we have already discussed that india uk free trade agreement is now being discussed and there are certain of the issues that are coming so uh, earlier it was thought that by the october it will be decided but now the, we might think that it will take some time then congress presidential elections not important fine trs complaints not important okay uh, cooperative act amendment clear so this is an important article with respect to the corporate corporate act we'll see this thing then further moving on after inspection government stops made in pharma from making drugs okay uh, a day to explore bear bear necessities fine so the sloth bear is being discussed so for prelims exam we'll discuss this entire article army prepares road map for induction of electrical vehicle electric vehicles 
now you see this thing that we are focusing on electric mobility and in this direction the army will consider that in the peace in the peace uh, peace stations now peace stations are those stations which are not located in some tense regions for example the delhi kent it is a peace location so in the peace locations they will be inducting the electric vehicles so right now the plan is that 25% of the light vehicles 38% of the buses 48% of the motorcycles in the select unit will be changed to evs the infrastructure will be put etc now no need to go in too much of detail in this particular article no need to go too much into the detail just in your so suppose a question you are writing on the e mobility in india or the induction of the e vehicles you can just say that recently recently the army has also prepared an induction map for inducting the e vehicles in the peace stations just this one liner concept you don't need to go and follow this entire article putin is a rational actor but he misjudged ukraine bid in okay so this russia ukraine crisis is going on and in this particular direction these issues are coming fine then Putin says Russia can provide gas via Nord Stream 2. So, guys, Nord Stream 2 also we have discussed, I think, many many number of times in the one newspaper few days back. Also, we have seen. So, Nord Stream 2, it is a gas pipeline which connects the Russia and Germany. And this Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline has not been operational. It has just been constructed, but it has not been operational because of now the sanctions that have been imposed on Russia because of the Russia-Ukraine war. Now, because the Nord Stream 2 is not operational, and even Nord Stream 2 has one. Nord Stream 1 has been suspended so there is a lot of natural gas shortages that are going in europe and now putin says that we can provide it if you want okay then moving on biden's security strategy focuses on china russia so china russia are the biggest contesters in this direction and on that thing us is inclined fine then uh, industrial uh, production shrinks uh, august industrial uh, production shrinks to 0.8% okay now uh, basically here when we talk about the industrial production it is shrinking because guys what has happened over the past few months because inflation is there government has incre the reserve bank of india has increased the repo rate it that particular thing is reflecting in this particular issue okay then wipro's net profits not important profit co corporate trends etc not very much important and then we have the sports page is it clear or not so uh, let's guys now discuss all the relevant articles that are important one by one in the detail one thing i want to tell you very clearly guys that see uh, every month every month iip data every month inflation sensex when it increased when it fall down these data are not something for very important for your exam because in prelims examination this will not be very much relevant as well as into the mains also because by the time you will write your exam these data will completely be changed is it clear you just need to know the overall overall state of indian economy clear because that is something which is asked in the examination now let's discuss the articles one by one okay so every class guys we take a gs code and this particular gs code is used uh, can be used in one of your answers okay one of your papers so today we'll take the quotation from the john stuart mill js mill now what the john stuart mill says john stuart mill says that bad men bad men need nothing more to compass their ends than that good men should look on and do nothing now who are the bad men bad men are unethical immoral people who just are bothered about their own who are just bothered about their own self interest now these bad bad men get a kind of a strength when the good men don't do anything so therefore we need to have an active citizenry who can raise their voices against the immoral actors against the bad forces that are there so simply if you are good it will not solve the problem you have to raise your voices against the social evils that are happening in the society so the goods men responsibility is not just to be good rather to raise the voices against the bad this is something that needs to be taken care of now this particular quotation this particular quotation can be used very effectively in gs paper number 4 ethics gs paper number 4 ethics particularly in the topic number 1 that is the ethics and human interface topic number 1 moreover every year there are the three court based questions that come there also this particular thing can be very much important okay uh, that is about this and now let's take the first article okay so the first article it talks about the china's wolf warrior era okay china's wolf warrior era now we'll see this particular article with respect to with respect to the issues in india's neighborhood issues in india's neighborhood neighborhood gs paper number 2 gs paper number 2 international relation ir okay now 
before going on in this particular article, guys, I would like to discuss a, a, a little bit of a background information, little bit of a background information so that you can connect with this article even in more better way. So basically, see this thing. When we talk about the China's foreign policy, 1978. 1978 was a very important landmark for the China because in 1978, China came out with their open, open door policy. Now, this open door policy was actually, a, it was actually the China's LPG reform. So, we came with the liberalization in 1991. China came with the liberalization in 1978. And at that point of a time, and at that point of a time, Deng Xiaoping, at that point of a time, Deng Xiaoping. So, Deng Xiaoping, okay, he basically provided that the China should be focused on one particular thing. What China should be focused on? He said that China should be focused on hide your capabilities, hide your capabilities and bide your time. Hide your capabilities and bide your time. Okay. Now, before 1978, before 1978 liberalization that came in the China, China was not an economic superpower. China was not an economic superpower. So, the Deng Xiaoping at that point of a time said that basically China should now enhance the economic superiority. China should become a military power and you should not raise much of attention. You just hide your capabilities. Don't attract attention and as you are gaining more and more power, just just be very silent, okay? Hide, uh, hide your capabilities and bide your time, take your time. This was something that was given in the 1978. After that, guys, what happened? After that, guys, what happened? In 1990, okay? Next, next change will come around 19, late 1990s actually, late 1990s. Now, during the late 1990s, when the China, when the China started to become a kind of an economic power, now this is the time when the China was registering the double digit growth. Now, the world countries tried to, started to suspect China that by this new economic power the China is getting, will it challenge the US's hegemony? Will the China be exerting its kind of a superiority on the world countries or onto the neighborhood? So, the world countries started to suspect the China and at 19 and the late 1990s China came out with a new flavor in their foreign policy they said that the China the China that the China is characterized by peaceful rise China is characterized by peaceful rise China said that our economic rise is peaceful we don't want to bother we don't to want to discuss dis, uh, disturb any of the power equation so in 1990 China changed from hide your capabilities and bide your time to peaceful rise. That is something that came, okay? And then guys, what happened? 2012, 2012, Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping came onto the landscape. 2012, Xi Jinping became the president. And after the coming of the Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping has now changed the foreign policy. Xi Jinping basically uh, came with the Belt and Road Initiative, Belt and Road Initiative, which was a kind of a mastermind, which was a brainchild of the Xi Jinping, in which the Xi Jinping said that the China will be connected with the Eurasia, with a, with the series of the road projects, railway projects, port projects, etc. So the China wanted to increase the connectivity, and actually, what has happened along with this, China is now under the Xi Jinping is a character is driven by an arrival factor by an arrival factor now what is arrival factor arrival factor is something when a person think that whatever they wanted to achieve they have achieved that particular thing now 2013 14 15 was a time when the china has grown for at a double digit rate for successively more than two decades is it clear or not and this is the time when actually the china has gained a lot of economic power military power diplomatic power and if you remember 2008 2008, 2008 and 9, when the global financial crisis came, at that point of a time, USA was impacted a lot. So, this is the time when the USA's economy seen a kind of a downfall, but at the same time, the China has registered a lot of growth. So, with the coming of the Xi Jinping, a kind of an arrival factor has been observed into the China and now China has yet again changed, has yet again changed to the wolf warrior diplomacy, wolf warrior diplomacy. Now, what is this wolf warrior diplomacy in one line? Wolf warrior diplomacy is characterized with an aggressive foreign policy. Aggressive and real
socialist foreign policy if you see with the india on to the line of actual control there are the disputes that are being manufactured it is openly challenging the usa even the diplomats of the china they are very they 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 they, 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 they are brashing when they are making the speeches they are very outright they are very outspoken and many a times the decency okay or the sophisticated language that needs to be there into the diplomacy they don't even bother that it should be used so very brash very kind of a outright outspoken and aggressive foreign policy has been now being followed in china which is called as a wolf warrior diplomacy wolf warrior diplomacy or wolf warrior for the foreign policy of the with the wolf warrior characteristics is it clear so this is something so just i want to i want to highlight that uh, please focus okay i will be highlighting in the red color so 1978 1978 open door policy just a minute 1978 open door policy it was characterized by hide your capabilities and bide your time then the next came 1990 so 1990 what happened peaceful rise peaceful rise of china and then in 2012 after the coming of the xi jinping arrival factor was predominant and with the arrival factor that came the china again switched to their foreign policy and then the wolf warrior diplomacy or wolf warrior foreign policy which is aggressive it has become very much prevalent okay now that is something now that is something so basically guys today when we talk about the china presently in 2022 china's foreign policy is actually struck between two things between two things on one hand on one hand china is presenting that they are actually the savior of the united nation centered world now if you remember yesterday also we have seen one article where we discussed that the china is running the parallel institutions which are running parallelly to the united nation now china is showing that they are the last harbor so as usa was the last harbor for so many of the decades now china is saying that they are the last harbor of all the countries and it wants to get the hegemony into the global institutions so therefore it is building its own institutions is it clear we have the brics bank and then we have the china centered many such organizations that are there okay so this is one thing that has happened okay then on the another uh, uh, after the, this is something that has happened find the china had said that the globalization is something which can be shared okay a community of shared destiny can be created so china on one hand wants to show that okay we care for the another world but on another hand but on another hand china is pursuing on the another hand china is pursuing their core interest more aggressively which is called as the wolf warrior approach now you see both thing both things at the same time cannot work on one hand on one hand you are saying that you are the savior of the world and on other hand you are very much aggressive so the china's foreign policy is struck in these particular kind of a two things now we have already discussed that into the past china has talked about the peaceful rise okay 19 late 1990 onwards okay then bide time and hide the capabilities hide your brightness this is something that has happened now since 2017 actually the china has has been characterized that they are moving to the center stage of the world and now the china says that actually this is the time for china to make the mark why because the west is declining you see that the usa usa is facing so much of the economical challenges right now if i tell you in 2020 usa is facing the 40 years biggest uh, highest inflation that is there so the west is declining and the east was rising and as the east is rising in the east specifically china has to rise more so china says this particular thing that the world is witnessing changes which are unseen in a century okay and the china wants to leverage all this particular kind of a thing now china in or, in in order to build their economic hegemony china in order to build their economic hegemony had come out with the belt and road initiative in 2013 now understand this particular thing that up till now the belt and road initiative what it is it's not very much clear because many of the components of the belt and road initiative are not even up till now in the public domain we know that the belt and road initiative is about infrastructure but that is one thing apart from that also there are the strategic goals also of the belt and road initiative now so belt and road initiative was an economic project that was started by china okay and here one strategic dimension is also there which i'll tell you just in minute so under the belt and road initiative china said that they'll provide the infrastructure to the eurasian countries and up till now the projects worth 930 billion dollars have been approved by the china under the belt and road initiative this is something but this thing has proved that there is inevitability of china china cannot be avoided what has happened see 
as china has built the infrastructure china has given a very subsidized loan to the poor countries to the underdeveloped countries in the region of central asia in the region of eurasia as well as into the region of asia and many of the countries today they are facing the rising debt levels now you see china has also one more dimension in their foreign policy that is the debt trap diplomacy debt okay i'll write it here debt uh, just a minute debt trap diplomacy now what is this debt trap diplomacy it simply means that you give a lot of debt to a country which is poor now obviously that country will not be able to pay back that particular debt and then you can take the strategic you can take the strategic allegiance of that particular country you dictate that okay if you are not able to give us the debt you pay you give us some of your strategic project for example hamban tota port of sri lanka now when the so much of debt was given by china to sri lanka and when sri lanka was not able to return that particular debt back china took the hamban tota port of sri lanka on 99 year of lease now the hamban tota port it is a very strategic asset why because the hamban tota port is lies near the vicinity of india so the hamban tota port can be used by china okay in the indian ocean okay so therefore this is a debt trap diplomacy now guys under the belt and road initiative a lot of money has been given and many of the partners they have very rising debt levels and as they have rising debt levels what has happened they have become more and more dependent on china now because they got a lot of money and now they need to pay back but they don't have money so again what they are doing rather than avoiding china now they are going again back to the china we have two examples here for example we have pakistan and we have sri lanka now the pakistan and sri lanka both the countries in the past have received more than 26 billion dollar from china okay and now both pakistan and the sri lanka are facing an economic crisis and when they are facing economic crisis what they are doing they are again going to china again taking more and more loan okay they are going they are turning not only to the international monetary fund but they are also going to china and again what will happen their dependence on china will increase and china will again use that particular thing for some strategic purpose okay this is something this is something that the china has characterized with then the next theme the next theme is that in this past 10 years china's rivalry china's rivalry with the usa has also deepened and at the same time china's friendship with the russia has increased okay this is something that has happened and this is actually a very clear cut of camp that has been developed for the first time after the 1991 collapse of the ussr so this is also one outcome of the xi jinping's leadership then when we talk about the relationship with the india so basically guys the relationship with the india it has basically it has been in a seesaw kind of a manner in a seesaw kind of a manner fine for example we see that actually there are some of the high points that were there now in the high points for example what happened for happened what happened there was the wuhan summit of 2018 then there was the Mam mamallapuram summit of 2019 now these were the high points where a lot of cooperation between the india and china came but right now if we see the india and china relations are at the lowest point why because of the border crisis that is now going on because of the transgressions by the china in the galwan valley by the transgressions of china around many multiple kind of a point and today we see that since the 1980 now after 1980 the normalization of india china relation happened and since 1980s right now the india china relation is at, at the lowest point is it clear or not now this is something moreover guys the india china relations have also been characterized by focus of chinese diplomacy on its great rivalry with the usa now you see china has rivalry with usa and india has good relation with the usa now bad that particular thing is also playing in out and actually that thing is also making the relations between india and china complicated okay so this is all guys about this particular article and now we'll move to the next article so this is actually a very very good article and even to the past 3 days repeatedly the articles on the china china's foreign policy are coming why because because the 20th 20th national congress of the communist party of china is going to be held from the 16th of october okay so because of that particular thing now these articles are coming every day so guys i'll just suggest you that you please make a compilation of all these articles that are coming really very very good points you will be finding every day so that is all about it and now we'll move to the next article Tamil Nadu notifies India's first slender loris sanctuary now this article is very very important for your prelims examination this article is very very important for your prelims examination issues related to the environment and ecology environment ecology conservation 
fine now basically uh, actually you can just see the photograph of the slender loris okay slender loris now what slender lorix lorises are slender lorises are small nocturnal mammals nocturnal what is nocturnal 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 are those animals which are active in night active in night so we have uh, basically uh, diurnal and the nocturnal okay so they are active in the night they will hunt in the night they will basically be uh, they will be eating the food in the night or their most of the activities will be done in the night time fine they are also the arboreal animals now what are the arboreal animals arboreal animals are the ones who most of the time live on the tree okay most of the times they will be spending on the tree okay so basically these are the mammals they give birth to the live ones they are nocturnal and they are arboreal it means they live on the tree now as per the iucn as per the international union for conservation of nature they have been given the status of the endangered species okay and because they have been given the status of endangered species they are to be protected and for their protection now the tamil nadu has notified a dedicated sanctuary for them now what is the what is the specific um, um, why these species are beneficial to human now these species are called as the friend of the farmers why because they act as a biological predator of the pest in the agricultural crops and therefore it benefits the farms so basically they predate uh, they eat the pest and therefore they are the pest managers they help in the pest management now in the past it has been seen that their habitat had got fragmented they are they are living on the trees and because of the deforestation they are because of the felling of the trees for the infrastructural projects their habitats got disturbed and therefore their population is facing a kind of a decline okay and therefore they have also been given the status of the endangered species now therefore in order to help for their conservation what had happened tamil nadu tamil nadu has notified the forest areas in karur and the dindigul districts of the tamil do that they will be the slender loris sanctuary where specific focus on their preservation will be made okay so for the prelims examination okay fine you need to see all these particular kind of an information no need to go beyond that now there is one additional attachment also in this particular article that can be seen that actually in the past 15 months tamil nadu has taken many many steps on environmental conservation what steps have been taken by tamil nadu for example tamil nadu has has notified india's first dugong conservation reserve in the park bay so dugong it is also called as a sea cow it is called as a sea cow dugong um, okay it is called as a sea cow fine it is found into the waters so therefore the park bay region has been just a minute park bay region has been notified as the india's first dugong conservation reserve fine secondly they have notified they had notified the kazuveli bird sanctuary okay then they have notified the uh, nanjarian tank bird sanctuary okay nanjarian tank bird sanctuary okay fine so first uh, sea dugong conservation reserve kazuveli bird sanctuary Na nanjarian tank bird sanctuary then there is the fifth elephant reserve okay the fifth elephant reserve of the state okay that has also been notified at agasthamalai at agasthamalai and then they have 13 wetlands that have been declared as the ramsar sites so in the environmental conservation tamil nadu has taken some of the very good and very notable kind of a steps so these things should also be remember for your prelims examination fine that is all about this article and now we'll move to the next article cooperative act amendments cleared cooperative act amendments clear now this particular article is talking about this particular article is talking about the just a minute multi state cooperative uh, it is talking about the multi state cooperative societies amendment bill 2022 okay now what has happened first of all this particular bill has been cleared by the cabinet this particular bill has been cleared by the union cabinet now first of all the proposal has been cleared now this particular proposal will be drafted will be put in public comments then that particular thing that particular proposal will be introduced as a bill in the parliament then the parliament will discuss it so passing will take a lot of time 
okay it has just been cleared now before going in this particular bill that what is this particular bill all about i want to discuss some of the background information and only after discussing this particular background information you will be able to understand this entire issue comprehensively now first of all this particular issue will be important in gs paper number 2 this article will be important for the gs paper number 2 polity fine and within the cooperative societies within the cooperatives fine it is provided as a in the developmental sectors of gs paper number 2 it's provided into the developmental sectors of gs paper number 2 okay so for gs paper number 2 this is an important article now let's discuss the background the background information i have provided you here in the uh, pdf as well okay now actually guys when we talk about the cooperatives so for the cooperatives the most important development that has been there it is the 97th amendment 97th constitutional amendment act so the 97th constitutional amendment act for the first time added the word cooperatives under after the word union and association in the article number 19 one sub clause c so under article number 19 the people have been given the freedom that they can form union they can form associations as well as they can form the corporate cooperatives so this word cooperative got added by the 19 97th constitutional amendment act then after that there was an amendment that was done in the article number 43 b of the indian constitution that is the directive principle of state policy so in the dpsp the promotion of cooperative societies was specifically added as a directive okay so again i am telling you the 97th constitutional amendment act did amendment in article 19 world cooperative was added in article 43 b dpsp the promotion of cooperatives was added then 97th constitutional amendment act also talked about also talked about the actual functioning and actual running of the cooperatives for example it provided the terms for the running of cooperative societies <coughs> how the cooperative societies should be operated then next when it defined the working of the cooperative parties it also defined the number of directors that a cooperative society should have what should be the length of their tenure okay and even the expertise required to become the member of a society okay this is something that they did they did a lot of uh, a lot of kind of a micromanagement they did and they dictated the terms for cooperative that is happening at the same time at the same time when this particular amendment was 97th constitutional amendment act was passed it was passed without getting the ratification of the state legislature now there are certain uh, constitutional amendment acts you might have read the article number 368 the chapter on to the constitutional amendment certain of the acts which will impact the federal nature of the country they need to be ratified by at least 50 percent of the states now see this thing see this thing what has happened the supreme court supreme court came with a ruling in 2021 last year and we also discussed this entire ruling in lot of detail in our newspaper analysis if you are following me for the one year you might have already seen it so now the supreme court said that actually in the indian constitution there is article 243 zi now article 243 zi has specifically provided that a state may it has specifically provided that a state may only make a law on the incorporation regulation and winding up of a society of a society now even it includes the cooperative society so it has been said that only state has the power to regulate legislate or to come out with the rules with respect to the working of cooperatives but here what has happened here the parliament here the parliament has made the law on the working of a cooperative now therefore the supreme court provides that this is actually the violation this is actually the violation of the constitutional spirit okay so what happened the supreme court held supreme court held that it is the violation of the constitution so therefore the 97th constitutional amendment act is not correct moreover supreme court pointed to one more issue also in this particular act supreme court said that there is the article 368 sub clause 2 there is article 368 sub clause 2 and it specifically talks that there are certain issues which can only be passed after taking after taking the ratification from at least half of the states is it clear or not now that thing was also not done by the 
government parliament at that point of a time so therefore it struck the it struck the provisions of the 97th constitutional amendment act not the entire some of the provisions of the 97th constitutional amendment act was struck so because of this particular thing the cooperatives etc were lot in the news in the past one year okay this is something that has happened now guys now guys the union cabinet has passed okay one more development meanwhile there was a ministry of cooperatives that was also fine ministry of cooperation was also created that was a separate development now the union cabinet has provided that okay we want to we want to make a law which will bring the governance of the multi state cooperative societies more democratic transparent and accountable now what are the multi state cooperative societies the cooperative societies which operate in one or more state, more than one state they are called as the multi state cooperative societies just a guys in just if you don't know what a cooperative is according to the ilo according to the international labor organization ilo cooperative is any organization where the people work for the economic social they, they they work for economic and social welfare of each other and the principle is not to make profit the principle is to cooperate with each other is it clear so these are the il these are the cooperative societies cooperative societies can work as a producer organization they can work as a consumer organization they can provide the credit to each other so there can be many functions of the cooperatives now the the now the basically government is saying that we want to bring the democratic functioning of the multi state cooperative societies and therefore they have come out they have come out with this multi state cooperative societies amendment bill 2022 now this particular bill what it aims it aims to provide for the provisions for provisions for the elections so it talks about it talks about the establishment of a cooperative election authority a cooperative election authority will be there an information officer will be there and an ombuds will be there now what they will be do election authority will make sure that elections in the cooperatives from the time to time are having information officer will provide that if any information is being asked that information should be given to the people okay if a cooperative comes under the rti act then the information should be given so the information officer will be there and an ombudsman ombudsman will look into the matters of complaint ombudsman will look into the matters of complaint or the grievances so these three bodies will be created by the virtue of this multi state cooperatives amendment bill now much of details are not there out because it is simply it has now been a proposal which has been cleared okay so that is all guys about it fine and the entire background entire issue of the cooperatives we have discussed so for gs paper number 2 it happens to be a very very important topic in the last one year two developments have happened development number 1 development number 1 that uh, 97th constitutional amendment act got struck down provisions of it and number 2 cooperation ministry was created so that is all about this article and now we'll move to the next article no more indictment under section 66a of the it act supreme court now this particular article again we'll see with respect to the gs paper number 2 gs paper number 2 issues of fundamental right gs paper number 2 issues of fundamental right okay now first of all let's discuss the background okay now the detailed background i had already provided you here in the notes okay so guys first of all section 66a So section 66A was a provision in the IT Act of 2000. So section 66A of IT Act 2000 it prescribed that there will be a punishment of three years if a social media message caused annoyance or was found offensive. Okay. Now suppose if you have posted something on Facebook and that Facebook post was offensive to some person or if it caused some kind of annoyance. to some person then that particular person who has created the post can be imprisoned up to 3 years is it clear or not now this section 66a of the it act was got challenged was got challenged into the supreme court it was said that actually it is a very vague kind of provision why because number one annoyance number one annoyance now annoyance is a very ambiguous kind of a term okay annoyance can be a minor irritation or annoyance can be very big also and secondly grossly offensive now what anything can offend you okay if let's say a person is going on the street and that particular person has worn a red color suit which i don't like i'll say that okay that thing has offended me so being a grossly offensive or something which is creating annoyance this is very subjective this is having a lot of ambiguity so it has been said that virtually anyone could be arrested under the section 66a if just that person has transmitted a message or if has made any post on to the social media any comment on to 
the social media. So therefore, the section 66A was challenged. It was said that actually section 60A is violative of article number 19, article 19, fundamental right, freedom of speech and expression. And the Supreme Court even, Supreme Court even found that yes, the section 66A is unconstitutional. It is unconstitutional and it got struck down in the Shreya single case of 2015. So please remember this Shreya single judgment of 2015 where this particular entire case got struck as it was unconstitutional. It violated the free speech. Court also provided this, that this particular provision section 66A is very vague. It is worded very arbitrarily and it said that section 66A gives too wide power and in that case individual liberty will be stifled, okay, freedom will be stifled. So that is something that happened. Then some more things, some more things, okay. Supreme Court said that the public's right to know is directly affected by the section 66A of the IT Act and it clearly affects the right of freedom of speech and expression. Terms like annoying, inconvenient, okay, they are very much vague. That is something that happened. Now, uh, it is more than seven years, it is more than seven years since this uh, section 66A got struck into the Sharia single case. But guys, even till today, there are the cases that are being filed into the under the section 66A. People have been arrested and I tell you that many of the courts also are hearing the matter under the section 66A. Last year also, uh, actually few months back also, this particular issue came in the news that the section 66A is being used. At that point of a time, Supreme Court said that please make sure that it is not being invoked because it has been removed. And now again, now again for the second time, now again for the second time Supreme Court has provided this particular thing that the police is still registering the cases under the section 66A and therefore it has Supreme Court has ordered the states, ordered states as well as police forces that they should stop prosecuting free speech on social media under section 66A. It has already been declared unconstitutional seven years ago. Moreover, CGI directed the Director General of Police as well as Home Secretaries of the State and the competent officers that they need to sensitize the police that police should not use the provisions of Section 66A because it is unconstitutional now. And as a, in a way, people are being persecuted just they have used their freedom of speech and most of the time there is political application of Section 66A. So by that virtue, Section 66A's application needed to be stopped immediately. But at the same time, suppose if there is a case, suppose if there is a case and in that case multiple sections have been imposed, Section 66A, Section 69 or something like that, only the Section 66A will be dropped. Other cases, other charges if there are there, they will continue. So this is something that has happened, fine, and just for the sake of convenience, simply one line concept, section 66A will not be used, okay. Now, we'll be moving to next article. We need a forest-led COP27. Now, this article is very good article and an important article for GS3, GS3 environment, ecology and conservation, okay. GS paper number 3, environment and ecology. Just a minute. So, the article will be important for GS paper number 3, Environment and Ecology. Okay. Now, basically, uh, first of all, the COP27 is being discussed. Now, the last year, that is the 2021, already the COP26, COP26 was organized in Glasgow. In COP26, India also participated and there the Prime Minister of India, the Prime Minister of India said that India will adopt the carbon neutrality by 2070. Moreover, the Panch Amrit targets were invoked in the COP26. So in COP26, India has played a very important role. Now, conference of parties, they are organized in order to take the stock that where environment is heading, where climate change is heading, what is to be done by member countries. Now, this particular article talks about that what should be the agenda of COP27 that will now be hosted in the coming times. So, what should be the agenda of COP26? Now, the article simply provides that first of all, we need to understand that environmental change is real and environment needs to be taken up with more of sensitivity. According to a study, 
according to a study that got published in journal science they said that already we have passed through the five dangerous tipping points because of the 1.1 degree celsius of global heating that had happened up till this date now what is the concept of this tipping points now you see tipping points are those points which disturb the earth's ecological balance tipping points are those points these are those thresholds if they are reached then the earth becomes very much instable fine there are certain processes that get starts which might bring some catastrophic events in the past we have seen that there was the global wipe down of the species that happened then also the earth's tipping points were were were, were reached and now also the same thing is happening now you see 1.1 degree celsius global heating has already happened it has destabilized the glaciers of the arctic region fine the arctic ice is at its lowest level and if that particular thing will continue what will happen sea level rise will increase by that particular thing what will happen there will be the floodings there will be the submergence of the island nations all all such kind of a things so we have touched the five tipping points up till now and because of this thing is happening the countries what they are doing they are saying that we need to develop technologies we need to transfer the technologies so developing and transferring of technologies is something which is being said as a solution we have moved towards techno determinism techno determinism what is techno determinism it simply means in one line that only technology will determine our future only technology will determine the solution of the most of the things now environment is getting impacted so environmental solution will be determined by the technology so we focus on technology for every problem and this is a sense of techno determinism that in that the world has reached today okay technology alone however is unprepared to deal with the challenges we need to focus on some other things also okay okay uh, just i'll take one small doubt that has come if a person commenting by taking name or picture of other person in social media will it come under section 66a uh, if it is unconstitutional how comes under section 66a comment by talking anybody's name see understand no it will not come why because section 66a has been has been de has been removed it has been struck down so now no nothing can happen under section 66a fine now so up till now what we discussed here we discussed here that the tipping points have been reached climate is changing and we think that only technology will solve that a techno determinism has come but technology alone cannot solve fine moving on cop26 at the glasgow also fueled technological optimism now this is a new word that has come what is optimism optimism is a sense optimism is to have a kind of a hope optimism is that there is a hope that all the things will turn good fine so technological optimism and technological determinism determinism is that that can only solve and optimism is that we have hope also that it will be effective as well so this is something that happened cop26 cop26 just focus on three of the resources that can solve the environmental problems number one is n electricity n electricity now what is n electricity n electricity is that electricity which is non emitting it means their carbon footprint will not be there so renewable energies or renewable electricity can be called as n electricity it will include the electricity generated by the hydropower renewables or nuclear fission so it is a clean energy which is n energy second it focused on carbon capture carbon capture we need to increase the green cover so that the carbon dioxide can be captured carbon storage fine we want to build the carbon sinks natural carbon sinks okay fine or we need to have the biomass which can absorb the carbon and can store it so these were the focuses in cop26 in cop26 the focus was made on to the technology but the article says that actually cop26 is not has not discussed the issues very elaborately in more details according to according to the article total demand for these resources fine whatever cop26 what resources we want by 2020 20, 2050 the world is actually not prepared according to a 2018 mit technology review it said that at the present rate it will take 400 years to transform the energy system you are just talking about transforming the energy system but you have not given any resource you have not devoted the money for that thing 
fine just you are talking and at the present rate it will take 400 years 400 years but do we have 400 years of time no we don't have there is one more study of 2003 that is the study of carnegie institution that they that said that world would need a nuclear plants worth of clean energy capacity every day between 2000 to 2050 in order to avoid the catastrophic climate change so every day a nuclear plants worth of clean energy is to be is to be provided fine this is something but are we doing it no we are not doing it then it's provided that there is a tech centric mitigation tech centric mitigations what is a tech centric mitigation again we say that if the mitigation now what is mitigation suppose there is a damage that has happened to minimize that impacts okay basically it is being said that the tech centric mitigation okay it leaves the forest economies forest issues such as the conservation of forest side they don't focus on the storage but you understand that actually climate conserve con uh, climate conversation okay using climate as a storage equipments it is the most important thing when we talk about forest forest absorbs 7.6 billion metric ton of co2 every year according to a new study according to a new study the forest can cool down the earth by an additional 0.5 percent but nobody is focusing on forest what we are focusing on technology so three words techno determinism techno optimism and tech centric mitigation everywhere technology is being focused fine according to according to the das gupta review according to the das gupta review which is an independent review it says that the green infrastructure it are two to five times cheaper than the gray infrastructure okay now what is the green infrastructure green infrastructure is basically uh, green infrastructure is that infrastructure which is environmentally sensitive fine so the green infrastructure is two to five more cheaper it's not expensive it's cheaper according to ipcc land report fine it has been said that land serves as a large co2 sink okay so in the land by the by the by installing of the car, by the installing of the trees fine the carbon sink are to be developed okay this is something that has been provided now the article says that we need to preserve earth's cyclical processes by protecting terrestrial ecosystems natural sinks by transforming the agricultural practices under the indigenous people local communities okay so their practices their traditional methods of conservation all these things are to be protected so understand this particular thing that climate crisis is just a symptom the sea level rise sea level rise species extinction it is just a symptom the problem is the human consumption that we have done we have over consumed the environmental resources the activity of humans they have exceeded the regenerative capacity of the planet so planets regenerative capacity have been reached so what you need to do we need to restrain our consumption and we need to focus on environment more so tech centric mitigation it will not do work rather the environmental centric mitigation or the or basically forest centric mitigation is something that is needed that is all about this particular article fine guys i hope that you have understood it and now we'll move to the next article the court and the problem with its collegium now this article will see with respect to gs paper number two gs paper number two judicial issues gs paper number two judicial issues okay now uh, basically first of all in this article many of the personal references okay many of the references on the judges have been given you don't need to read that only we need to read this particular article in academic capacity okay now first of all uh, there is a little bit of a background that i'll tell you now the chief justice the present chief justice of india that is justice uu lalit will retire next month and in his place justice dy chandrachud will become the next and the 50th chief justice of india he will stay as a chief justice of india for nearly two years okay now so there is next the appointment of the next cgi is to be done just a minute so there is the appointment of the next cgi that is to be done and at the same time there are the four supreme court vacancies also that are there these four supreme court vacancies are to be filled fine now you see this thing that actually what happened actually what happened recently recently the collegium met the collegium met and the collegium had to decide the matter of the appointment of the four supreme court judges first of all when we talk about the collegium collegium is simply the group of five senior most supreme court judges and the collegium is headed by the chief justice of india so total five judges will be there one cj and the four senior most judges and it will finalize the appointment of judges to the supreme court 
fine it will finalize the judge appointment of the judges of the supreme court at the it also advises the union government as well as the president okay that who will be appointed fine this is something that has happened now recently a collegium meet happened and in this particular collegium meet what happened uh, first of all first of all justice u u lalit has initiated the proposal for the appointment of the four new judges into the supreme court and the consent of the fellow judges were to be asked so collegium meet was there and the consent of the fellow judges was asked in this particular thing what happened two judges supported the cgis proposal okay why the while the two other judges they objected to the process of selections and appointing the judges by the process of circulation so actually what happened in this collegium meet one of the judge was not able to go because there was some kind of other engagements and then there was a circulate cir circulation or circular that was issued so that particular process was set okay and because of that particular project some kind of an objection came and finally the collegium was not able to appoint was not able to decide the four supreme court judges and now what has happened the fresh collegium meeting has been planned the fresh collegium meeting has been planned and this fresh collegium meeting might be happening after one month so you don't need to go too much into the detail simply understand that a collegium meeting was there final decision did not came so therefore now the postponement that has happened okay meanwhile the union government has asked formally the cgi u u lalit to recommend his successor and his successor will be the justice u u lalit right uh, sorry his successor will be the justice d y chandrachud right fine presently the supreme court is short of the five judges total sanction of the supreme court is 34 but five judges it is short now the article is talking about this particular thing that actually actually why the five people who work in the same building can meet the very next day and can conclude the decision of appointing the judges what they have done they have kept one month's deadline that after one month they will decide this collegium issue now the article is talking about that actually supreme court vacancies is a very big problem and you cannot just take it very casually you cannot just take it very lightly okay so it has been said that why there is nobody to ask the questions with the collegium that why you are not taking the important decisions it has been said that the collegium is an extra constitutional body or it is a non constitutional body fine which has been brought in force just by the supreme court judgments and actually collegium most of the time is not answerable to government it is not answerable to to to, to any of the body supreme court collegium is the most supreme body okay moreover when we talk about collegium in collegium there is no seat It, for any non judge okay any member of executive any member of the bar council or any member is not present into the collegium now you see this thing that in the past the collegium has criticized also many number of times it has been said that collegium leads to the phenomenon of nepotism favoritism the phenomenon of uncle judges it has been many a time alleged that it exists into the indian judiciary where the judges are appointing their own relatives and it's also said collegium is only basically collegium is a institution where the judi member of judiciary are choosing their own fellow judges similar kind of thing doesn't happens in the another country so collegium is not accountable and it is doing such kind of a thing so this is something that has been provided guys in the past actually in 2014 there was an attempt also to bring the reform on the collegium system what happened in 2014 there was the national judicial appointment commission that was constituted now this national judicial appointment commission it will have three judges it will have the law minister and then there will be the two of the eminent person and this national judicial appointment commission will decide the matters of the appointment of the judges of supreme court high court as well as the transfer of the judges of the high court will be seen by this national judicial appointment commission and it was brought as it was said that it will bring the transparency in the collegium system which has not which has become very opaque but then the supreme court supreme court struck down the national judicial appointment commission they said that it has tampered with the powers of judiciary and therefore it cannot be allowed it got struck down and at that point of a time actually supreme court said that we will reform the process supreme court also said this thing that a memorandum of a procedure memorandum of procedure will be brought okay they said that we accept collegium system has some kind of a problem we'll reform that but up till now nothing has happened in this particular direction so it's provided that at least provide a place at the table for the questions that why the question may not be asked okay 
if a collegium is recommending something, if a collegium is doing something, we need to ask the questions. But right now that process is not there. So it has been said that this is the time to secure a better, broad-based and transparent method of appointing the senior judges of the High Court and the Supreme Court. The collegium reforms are needed. It has been provided. It has been provided that. While doing so, we may ask why there have been no appointment from the category of the distinguished jurist which Article 124 of the Constitution contemplates. Okay, so a distinguished jurist has not been appointed up till now. What is the issue? So, therefore, 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 there is urgent need of bringing the collegium system reforms. This is, guys, the gist of this entire article. Now, you see that as this article is being discussed, you need to be very careful in this particular article. Your arguments need only to be in academic sense. You should not go personal in these kind of an issues. So, please be very, very careful. Now, we'll move to the next article. The war against illegal goods as India fights. Now, <clears throat> this particular article, guys, talks about the basically cheap made goods that many a number of times are coming in India by the way of smuggling or just they are coming and they are disturbing the India's domestic manufacturing capabilities. This particular article we'll see with respect to the GS paper number three, GS paper number three issues with respect to the Indian economy, issues with respect to the Indian economy and within the, with, within this we will see it with respect to the manufacturing sector of India, manufacturing sector of India, okay. Now, basically, the article starts with a premise. Article states that high inflation, high inflation, it many number of times impacts the purchasing capacity of the people. Even if you see right now, we are facing the highest inflation in the past few months. Over the nine months, persistently, the inflation has been high than the tolerance band of India. So, when the inflation increases, people defer the purchases, they will purchase in the coming times, they will purchase less, people will defer, they will avoid the purchase or they will purchase less, okay, they will go for re reusing the things, they will go for recycling of the things and sometimes they will switch to the cheaper alternatives, sometimes they will switch to the cheaper alternatives and when they switch for the cheaper alternatives, it gives the stimulus to a market of cheaper goods and what happens the good the market becomes flooded with these cheaper goods you need cheap electronic items you need cheap decorative items and as you demand it what happens market becomes flooded for that basically the china angle then comes in now china has a particular competency in manufacturing the cheap goods and therefore the goods from the china they start to proliferate in india a parallel the parallel economy dealers okay they start to function to function in providing these cheap goods okay and these cheap goods come from the factories of china okay that is something that is happening now in the past in the past we have seen this particular thing that government of india government of india has come out with the atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan atmanirbharata agenda this is the government's response now government provided that we need to focus on our own reliance on our own capabilities we need to have the manufacturing within india only okay this is something that has happened but number one we need to understand that till the time the cost of manufacturing in india will not be reduced till the time the cost of manufacturing in india will not be reduced we cannot handle the China. Why? Because China provides cheap goods and people needs the cheap goods. So, always the China will be dominant. So, if you want to beat China, you make sure that the manufacturing cost within India are less and all that particular thing, we need to address the anomalies at each stage in the value chain. The logistic, electricity, okay, raw materials, okay, every stage we need to address some of the issues that are there. Now, the article says that at the same time, number one, there are the cheap goods, Number one, there are the cheap goods. Number two, there is also the illicit market problem that's there. Basically, it says that because the consumer needs the cheaper alternatives, it gives birth to the smuggled and illegal goods market. Now, I give you just one example. In the past, what has happened? Cig uh, the, the tax on to the cigarettes, the tax on to the cigarettes have been increased repeatedly. Because the cigarettes have become expensive, now you'll you'll find that you'll find those very thin kind of cigarettes, very thin kind of cigarettes that have come in India. On those cigarettes, you will not be having any warning. 
okay you will not be having any warning or that uh, kind of a very scary kind of photograph of cancer it will not be there these cigarettes okay are the smuggled cigarettes which are coming from the countries such as thailand now these cigarettes they do they are smuggled obviously there will be no tax on that okay then these cigarettes compete with the indian domestic cig uh, indian domestic cigarette manufacturers fine in that same way many of the goods come from smuggling comes from smuggling in india okay so this illegal goods market in increases now when we talk about the smuggling according to according to the federation of indian chambers of commerce and industry committee against smuggling and counterfeiting activities destroying the economy so this is a very long name you can remember the short form that's cascade okay so according to the cascade it's being provided that there are the five key indian industries in which smuggling is existing so smuggling is existing in mobile phones mobile phones mobile components fast moving consumer goods fmcg goods okay in fmcg goods the consumer goods that we use for the for our consumptive purposes personal need goods fine cosmetics even they'll come fmcg packaged goods okay tobacco products okay and the alcoholic beverage many of them are getting smuggled now according to according to economist intelligence unit find india ranked low in the global illicit trade environment index and we need to have quantifiable action to bring down the risk of the illicit trade okay we have not taken much of a steps and india is suffering there are the four elements there are the four elements where there is issue number one government policy government policy is not up to the mark and government policy is not able to be able to act as a deterrent on this particular market on this particular illegal smuggling that is happening supply and demand fine we have a demand people need cheaper goods and therefore the demand is there okay today people rather than smoking the earlier cigarettes brand they were smoking now they have switched to these cigarettes so there are the demand then there is a supply okay then there is the custom environment custom environment is such that you can you can uh, the custom environment is such that you can uh, you can uh, take out your way okay there are sometimes the corruption that is there sometimes the process is such that you can uh, take make out your ways then moving on then moving on after that the cascade report also estimates that the unlawful trade in industries okay it results to the total estimate legitimate leg, uh, legitimate employment loss of 15.96 lakh so basically 16 lakh 16 lakh employment is also getting impacted how the employment is getting impacted now you see there are certain of the goods there are just a minute there are the certain of the goods which we are simply importing from the outside countries now if we would have developed the manufacturing capability of such kind of a things what had happened it would have employed the people 16 lakh people would have been employed but now these people are not employed so also it is leading to the employment loss okay then next the lesser known fact is that more evolved and uh, manufacturing markets they certainly support the smuggling now you see this particular thing when we talk about china when we talk about the china china is one from where a lot of these smuggled goods are coming many times the developed countries are also the ones developed countries are also the ones fine the west from where these smuggled goods are entering into the india now these countries have not taken any action on the exporters who are exporting those smuggled goods to india why they don't take any action why they don't take any action because it does not harm their local economy whose economy is being harmed india's economy is being harmed and at the same time it is also <coughs> helping the manufacturing sector they are also helping the manufacturing <coughs> sector okay so therefore the <coughs> developed world as well as the countries such as the china they have not taken much of interest on to the smuggling after that the practical measures to stop smog uh, to to stop smuggling are to be taken okay government needs to keep the tax rationalized in the categories where the smuggling is high now you see this particular thing so you see this particular thing suppose there is a good suppose there is a mobile phone or uh, let's say let's say there is a okay let's take there is a mobile phone now when the mobile phone is there suppose the custom duty on a particular type of a mobile phone is 100% is 100% now paying 100% custom duty on this mobile phone will make mobile phone very much expensive what you what a person will do the person will get a lot of incentive that he should avoid paying the 100% custom duty and should bring this particular mobile phone by smuggling now what government should do government needs to rationalize this custom duty let's say let's say uh 30% let's say 
Now, if there is a 30% of the custom duty, many of the smugglers will think that let's pay the 30% duty, let's not smuggle the goods, let's pay 30% duty because 30% is not that much high. But if we got caught, all our shipments will be seized, there will be the penalties that will be there. Are you getting? Now, guys, you see, when you take a risk, you take the risk when the cost of risk is something like this, that benefit will be more. When the cost of risk is less and the benefit will be more. Now, here the benefit is just 30%. So, many of the, them will pay the taxes. So, we need to, to rationalize. Fine. We, basically, it has been provided that where smuggling is high, fine, we need to give the lesser cost arbitrage incentive to the smugglers. Okay. Lesser cost arbitrage incentive reduce the taxes. Okay. It has been provided. After that, we need to support the local industry by rationalizing tax and providing incentives to local manufacturers. Okay, you go to your local manufacturers, you go to the MSME sectors and provide them support. So, they also manufacture these goods. After that, next that has been provided that MNCs are needed to be given benefit to repatriate profits earned from the goods they sell outside India. Now, you see this thing. Most of the time, we say that we don't have the domestic manufacturing. We want to attract the domestic manufacturers. We have come out with many of the schemes also. For example, the production linked incentive scheme we had come out with. Now, how to attract more and more manufacturers? Suppose you call a manufacturer from China. You call a manufacturer from China in the India and give that particular manufacturer land, give them manufacturer clearance and all such kind of a thing. And you provide this manufacturer that, okay, whatever goods you are exporting to other countries, you are exporting to US, you are exporting to Russia, whatever profit will be there, that profit will not be taxed. That profit will not be taxed. That profit can be repatriated back to your own country. We will tax only, only that particular income which you will generate from India. Now, this will be a kind of an incentive. It is a kind of a tax incentive that India is given. And by that particular thing, what will happen? Many of the manufacturers will directly be starting the industries in India. And as they'll start, what will happen? We can also have the competency in our in, in our manufacturing. We will have the uh, the we, we will have the command over the uh, affordable and good products. Then next, it has been provided that according to the cascade, the enforcement can be improved by using the artificial intelligence, blockchain. Okay, location technologies, fine, seizure of illegal goods. Now, I told you that smuggling is a very big problem. As the smuggling is a very big problem, okay, so we need to use artificial intelligence and all such kind of a things. Fine, locations of the goods where they are being manufactured should be tracked and it needs to be seen whether such kind of a goods they have on them, the duties have been paid or not. And finally, Finally, government must also increase the consumer awareness, okay, so that the people boycott the smuggled goods, counterfeit goods and the poor quality goods, okay. So, people also need to be awakened, fine. So, it has been provided. So, it is a time to give Atma Nirbharta another dimension, yet another dimension, okay. So, this is something that's all about this particular article. And now, we'll move to the next article. <clears throat> Okay, a day to explore beer necessities. Now, this particular article talks about the sloth beer. Meanwhile, there is some doubt. Let's take this particular doubt. Uh, collegium is not answerable to anyone. I think process of selection of judges should be based on meritocracy, okay, as like UPSC, okay. Yes, such kind of reform can be suggested, okay. <coughs> now, watching, uh, okay. Watching your videos regularly and keep noting, highlighting, do I need to go for monthly magazines? Uh, see, uh, dear, going for monthly magazines or not, it's purely your choice because every day when we discuss the newspaper analysis, we take the entire newspaper from the page number one to the page number last. For revision, it's purely your choice, okay? Will government, uh, okay, so there is one more question. Will government provide compensation to the 40% land they keep in land policing policy if 60% land will be given? Also, it will be a loss of 40% of the land. Okay, so Nandan, I hope, I think you are asking the question about the land pooling policy that we discussed. Okay, see, I'll explain this particular point. Basically, when the land pooling policy is there, people are giving this particular, people are giving their land. Okay, what happens? Government will develop the land and some part government will give back to the people. Government will give back to the people. Now understand why government will compens why government will give compensation. Government has developed your area. Government has developed your land. Basically, the land was barren. There was no sewage. There was no electricity connection. There was no roads. There was no hospitals. So what has happened? You got the development. Obviously, by that particular thing, the value of that particular land will be increased. So no, the compensation will not be given. Government is basically when we talk about, okay. Basically, when we talk about 40% land, for example, 
गवर्नमेंट इज यूजिंग फॉर मेकिंग द रोड्स गवर्नमेंट इज यूजिंग फॉर मेकिंग द कम्युनिटी सेंटर्स एंड ऑल सच काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग्स सो बेसिकली दिस थिंग विल लीड टू अप्रिसिएशन ओके सो गवर्नमेंट विल नॉट पेड नॉट पे द कंपनसेशन ओके सो आई होप इट इज क्लियर नाउ मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट आर्टिकल दैट इज द आर्टिकल ऑन द स्लोथ बियर सो आर्टिकल से इज अ डे टू एक्सप्लोर बेयर नेसेसिटीज नाउ दिस आर्टिकल विल बी सीन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द एनवायरमेंट एनवायरमेंट एंड कंजर्वेशन environment and conservation gs paper number 3 also this particular article will be important for the prelims examination prelims examination okay now uh, the article is talking about the sloth bear now let's talk li little bit details about the sloth bear in first and then we'll be discussing this particular article sloth bear it's called as melersus ursinus it's the scientific name of the sloth bear it is a species endemic to indian subcontinent it means that it is it it originally belongs to the indian subcontinent now the sloth bear 90% of the population of sloth bear is found in india and apart from the india some population of the sloth bear is also found in the nepal and sri lanka now sloth bear they have been classified as vulnerable on the iucn red list <clears throat> they have been classified as vulnerable iucn red list at the same time sloth bear also comes under the schedule 1 of the wildlife protection act it means that they have been given the highest protection on par with the tigers etc is it clear or not then moving on moving on to so basically what has happened yesterday that is the 12th of october we have celebrated the world sloth bear day and for the first time okay so there are two developments that had happened first fine there are the two developments that had happened first you can see that first slender loris sanctuary in india has been declared and secondly the first world sloth bear day has been observed that is on to the 12th october now when we talk about the world sloth bear day it was suggested by the wildlife sos which is an organization involved in the conservation of the animals and the sloth bear so it has given the recommendation to the iucn species survival commission and the iucn species survival commission has approved that yes the 12th october will be celebrated as the world sloth bear day and as the 90% of the sloth bear populations are here in india it is a kind of an important thing for india now when we talk about the sloth bear there is one more fact about the sloth bear that i want to tell you that actually the sloth bear for a very long period of time they were exploited as the dancing bears so you might have seen this thing in your childhood or you might ask your parents that earlier a person used to come and the person used to bring a bear and that bear used to dance and basically as you see the madari who brings the monkey so in the same way the bears were basically domesticated and they were used to make the dance do the dance so they were the dancing bear practice now this dancing bear practice was majorly majorly it was done as an alternative as as a livelihood mechanism by the kalandhar community so kalandhar community used to domesticate and used to use these bears for dancing now these bears have been rehabilitated and the kalandhar community has also been given the alternative livelihood so that they don't depend on that so these are some of the efforts that have been taken in the past for the sloth bear okay so you can see the photographs of the sloth bear these are the black color bears that we have okay that's all about this article and now we'll move to next article now inflation accelerates at 7.41% highest since april okay now this article is talking about the inflation fine so we see today we see right now the retail inflation it has accelerated to 5 month high 7.41% okay so the excel uh, the, the inflation for the month of september it stands at 7.41% it is highest and in the inflation when we talk about specifically the food inflation food inflation it is at 8.41% so food inflation is 8.41% and the inflation retail inflation retail inflation is at 7.41% now understand this particular thing that actually when we talk about guys the the inflation india goes for inflation targeting and under the inflation targeting it has been decided that inflation should stay between the band of 2% to 6% and this particular band was suggested by the urjit patel committee urjit patel committee 
However, if inflation goes beyond 6%, then the Monetary Policy Committee, Monetary Policy Committee, they had to send an explanatory note to the government that why they were not able to control the inflation. Now, when we talk about inflation, guys, when we talk about inflation, this is the ninth month, this is the ninth month in a row that inflation has exceeded the 6% upper tolerance limit and now the RBI would send an explanatory note to the government that why they are not able to achieve the stability. Is it clear or not? Now, as the inflation is going on, what will be the challenge? What will be the issue? Now, when there is inflation, the, Gover the Reserve Bank of India has to come out with the tight monetary policy. Reserve Bank of India had come out with a tight monetary policy. In the tight monetary policy, what Reserve Bank of India will do? Reserve Bank of India will increase the repo rate, will increase the repo rate. Repo rate is that particular rate at which the Reserve Bank of India will provide the money to the commercial banks. Now, if the repo rate will increase, the money that commercial banks are getting, it will become expensive. And if that particular thing will become expensive, the loans, the loans that the business are taking, the loans that the people are taking, these loans will also become expensive. And by that particular thing, there will be an impact on the business sentiments. There will be an impact on the business sentiments. Is it clear or not? Now, understand this particular thing that guys, when we talk about, when we talk about an economy, if we want to give a boost to economy, we need to make sure that there needs to be the cheap credit supply in economy. Right now, we are in a kind of a dilemma where on one hand, we need to provide the cheap credit, but on another hand, that cheap credit is also bringing the inflation. So right now, the government is in a confusion and inflation is increasing. However, however, now the Reserve Bank of India has changed their stance and they are also focusing on inflation control. Okay, so this is a brief update that's been there. Okay, uh, after that, guys, we need to see that how it will be behaving. However, you don't need to see month by month that okay, it was this much percentage in June, then July, then August, then September. Okay, that is not something that you need to go too much in detail. So that is all about this particular article. Okay, now guys. Now guys, uh, this particular article, you don't need to go too much in detail. Just read the basic gist of this particular article. Why? Uh, first of all, uh, I'll tell you that what is actually in this article. This article is talking about basically what has happened. What has happened? The Supreme Court bench has asked the center government as well as the RBI that were the objectives of the demonetization achieved? Were the objectives of demonetization achieved? You know this particular thing in 2016, government came out with the demonetization where 500 rupees and 1000 rupees currency notes got demonetized. At that point of a time, government gave that justifications that we are going for demonetization. It will help us in curbing black money, terror financing and all such kind of a things. So now the Supreme Court is asking that had that thing happened or not. So basically a constitution bench, a constitution bench questioned, a constitution bench questioned the RBI that you gave many of the justifications for stop, for demonetization. Number one, choking of the black money, that by demonetization black money will be choked. Terror financing will be reduced. Fake currency notes, so the fake currency, that fake currency note problem will be solved. All these objectives were given and by that particular logic what happened, by that particular logic, fine. 86.4% of currency in circulation, it got demonetized. Fine, 86.4% of currency in circulation, that is around 15.44 lakh crore rupees, okay, it got it got demonetized. Fine, out of that, only 16,000 crore rupees, oh, sorry, only 16,000 crore rupees, that is just 0.2.7% of fake currency has not been captured. So, just 0.27% was the fake currency, okay? Only 0.27% currency has not returned back, other money has returned back. So, only this was the fake currency or the black money which did not got returned, okay? More than this, more than this, the government has spent in printing of the currency. Then there was the economic shock that was given. The entire informal sector got crumbled down under the demonetization. Even till now, the informal sector has not been able to recover back. Is it clear or not? So actually, it has been asked that what has happened. Now, now guys, what government is saying? Government is saying, government is saying, in just a minute, I, I'll show you, okay. Okay, yes, what government is saying, just a minute, government had asked the government that uh, government has asked the judiciary that bench should not waste the judicial time on this issue. 
that the judiciary should not waste the time on this issue okay there is nothing that you are looking in okay fine we have done what we wanted to do but judiciary say that no we'll ask the question judiciary why it is asking a question judiciary say that actually the demonetization was done earlier also 1946 1978 also the demonetization were done but at that time of a time when the demonetization one was done it was done by passing an act and that act was debated into the parliament so government at that time 1946 and 1978 gave the accountability they gave the justification for the demonetization but this time the denotification uh, the the demonetization has happened only by passing a notification which was issued under the reserve bank of india act 1934 so you just passed the notification finance ministry just passed the notification and demonetization happened so accountability has not been provided fine 86.4 currency got demonetized okay and maximum of that had come so here it has been said that the crucial documents which led to this exercise of demonetization okay why it happened it these documents have not been presented so government should give the justification what has been achieved so this is also this is all all the thing that has come in this particular article so that is all guys about it and now let's move to the mains practice question for today okay the mains practice question for today so guys the, the today's mains practice question it reads technology at best technology at best can assist us not lead us on the pathway to sustainable regenerative and equitable world technology can assist cannot lead us discuss this statement discuss this statement in the context of climate mitigation strategies so this particular art question will be seen with respect to the gs paper number 3 and it will be a 15 marker question it will be a 15 marker question okay so that is guys all about this particular discussion for today i hope that you are able to understand it and i hope you are able to take the advantage of this initiative so guys that is all for today if you like the video you can always support us by hitting the like button and i really appreciate all of your support fine so guys now we'll be meeting tomorrow till then please take care of yourselves thank you so much